gentlemen. It was such a pleasure to have Dan here tonight doing his uh, stand-up to you as well. So I think he's a little warmed up now. You know him for his music. But who wants to tell, hear him tell some jokes? Since he gave me my first chance. Dan, get on up here. Give it up for Dan Franklin. No, it's great. Keep going. It's not great. Can you just go ahead and do that after every joke? That would be perfect. Uh, yeah, so, um. Shh. I've been up here for 10 seconds. You're having me already? <laughs>
does look at is that they will, they will reference, it will point out some inanimate object that has nothing to do with what you were talking about. Son, I need you to finish these vegetables because your body needs the nutrients. No, -uh, just look at it. <laughs> look at my action figure over here. Okay, it has nothing to do with what you were talking about. Uh, but anyways, I, I love the depth. And, and when, you, when your kids are doing these kind of things, it makes you think, I was never like that. I was never that kid. <laughs> Uh, I talked with my mother about this. Apparently, I was much worse. <laughs> um, I came up with a bunch of different stories that I could, could use to demonstrate this fact, but the one that I'm going to share with you is uh, one that I haven't shared with anyone except for a very, very select few people, like everyone that was here at the first show. And, uh, and what I'm going to tell you about is this, is this organization that I was in in junior high called CLAW. <laughs> All right, now, yes, exactly, I knew you would like that. Uh, so what Paul was is, is uh, my Dungeons and Dragons playing friend, Jeff and I, uh, would, um, you know, dream up this concept that we were going to go out and we were going to stop the gang problem in Ukiah because the police weren't doing, there's no gang problem in Ukiah. <laughs> Apart from some hippies tagging pot beefs on the co-op, that's about as bad as it gets. So uh, what Claw stood for was chemical, law enforcement, and warfare. All right. Uh, we took we, it's stupid. We, we, we took the A from and and put that in the acronym, but not the E from enforcement, which is uh, we were in sixth grade. Stop it. We were kids. Uh, so we, we decided we were going to go out and we were going to have our first outing and we were going to put a stop to this crime. So uh, we dressed in all black. I was staying over at Jeff's one night and we waited until his parents went to sleep. And we armed ourselves to the teeth with Ninja Turtle inspired weaponry. <laughs> yeah! yeah. He, had a, he had a katana, a real long katana shark, a pocket full of M80s. I had nunchucks, real shark throwing stars. Uh, we had chains, bricks, knives, cats. We did, it was, it was that. And, and we, we, we went out and we made it exactly one house. <laughs> when we heard something rustling in the brush, we were gone. That was it. That was the extent of our, but that's not what we told all our friends happened. Right? And what happened next was really, really a defining moment in my life. We went and tell, told all our friends that what we had encountered was a giant, white alien-like creature with smooth white skin and glowing blue eyes and these foot-long claws that we named the Hobbler. <laughs> the Hobbler. I don't know which one of us came up with that uh, or the nickname that we had for him, which was Lenny. Uh, <laughs> Lenny the Hobbler. Uh, and I expect fan art, please. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but basically, we, we told all our friends that this, this creature, Lenny the Hobbler, uh, what had happened is we had an encounter with this guy, and he had slain several of our organization <laughs> and before we had finally vanquished him and buried him on the mountain behind the high school. And it's one of those things where you ever, you know, when you're that age and you tell a story, and you really want to believe, you want them to do it, you keep telling them. And then you hear it told back to you from other people. And you, you tell it again. You keep telling this over and over and over. And it starts to become real. Everybody who's chuckling right now knows what I'm talking about. There's a word for us. It's pathological. So it, it just got to the point where we told this story so many times that I was convinced in my heart of hearts that Lenny, the hobbler, existed and that he had come back from the dead and he was coming after me. I started seeing him everywhere in that town. Everywhere I walked in Ukiah, there he is. He's, he's, on, the, he's on, a, on the street corner over there. He's in the coffee shop over here. And to this day, it still kind of gets me when I go to Ukiah and I walk down Stanley Street at night and I look at the end of the block. There's the hobbler. <laughs> He's looking at me with that smirk. So I guess to, to sum up, what I like most about Los Angeles uh, <laughs> is that I have never seen the hobbler on any of these streets ever. Thank you.